here, my child. Sit down, Maria. I want to talk to you. Yes, of how last night. I was on my knees most of the night because I was late, and after you've been so kind and given me permission to leave. And Maria, it wasn't about your being late. I must have awakened half the Abbey before Sister Sophia heard me and opened the gate. Very few of us were actually asleep, Maria. We could only think that you had lost your way. And to be lost at night on that mountain? Reverend Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to go down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work, and I'd hear them sing on their way to Vespers. Many times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way, which brings me to another transgression. I was singing, and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it's only here in the Abbey that there is a rule about singing. That's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta is always reminding me, but too late after I've started singing. And the day you were in the garden, singing at the top of your voice? But Mother, it's that kind of a song. I came to the window and when you saw me, you stopped. Yes, that's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind, too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a girl, and I can't quite remember. Please? We drops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Even then, 
Maria, the dress you wore when you came to us, is it still in the robing room? Why no, Mother, I'm sure it has been given to the poor. Sister Margareta says that when we enter the Abbey, our... Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? Oh no, Mother, please, no. For a while only, Maria. Please don't make me leave. This is what I want, this is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps if you go out into the world again for a time, you will return to us knowing what it is we expect of you and that we do expect it. Mother, I know what you expect and I will do it, I promise. Maria? If it is God's will, where am I to go? There's a family. A family of seven children. You like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Fontalab expects you this afternoon. He's a fine man and a brave one. He was given the Maria Theresa medal by the Emperor. It was for heroism in the Adriatic. A captain in the Navy, Mother, he'll be very strict. Oh, you're not being sent to his battleship. God bless you, Maria. <laughs> again, putting toads in her bed. She didn't complain of that, sir. Well, there's another one coming today. This one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Longbrook Abbey with orders to stay until September. Oh, I hope you'll be at home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call, was it for me? No, sir, it, it was from Franz. <clears throat> there was a call earlier today from Vienna, uh, Frau Schmidt. I have her number in the pantry. I have the number. Oh, I will be back in about a month with some guests. Sir, do you know how many, sir? Uh, just two. Herr Detweiler. Ah, Herr Detweiler. And Frau Schrader. Who wants to be on the telephone? It was the post office. They got a telegram for you. It will be delivered here at 7 p.m. 7 o'clock. That gives me five hours to be nervous. With that scatterbrain boy delivering telegrams. Well, that's one thing people are saying. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have a vicious. Don't let the captain hear you saying that. <whistles> he didn't whistle for us when his wife was alive. He's being the captain of a ship again. <whistles> I can't bear being whistled for. It's humiliating. In the Imperial Navy, the bosun always whistles for us. 
I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. <clears throat> Too bad. You could have made a fortune. <laughs> Captain Von Trapp, and you are Fräulein? Maria, Maria Reiner. Now, Fräulein, as to your duties here, would you mind stepping over there? Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. <clears throat> but I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes are given to the poor. And what about this one? The poor didn't want this one. <laughs> This is what you call a worldly dress? It belonged to our last postulant. I would have made myself a dress, but I wasn't given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material. Today, if possible. Now, Fräulein, you will be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You will find out how far they've progressed in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom. Each afternoon, they march. You will see that at all times they conduct themselves with decorum and orderliness. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir. Your new governess, Fräulein Maria. As I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fräulein, will listen and learn their signals so that you can call them when you want them. Liesel. Friedrich. Louisa. Kurt. Brigitte. How well you listened. I won't have to whistle for them, Reverend Captain. What I mean is I'll be with them all the time. Not on all occasions. This is a large house and a large estate. They have been taught to come only when they hear their signal. Now, when I want you, this is what you will hear. Oh, you will warn the trouble, sir. I couldn't answer to a whistle. That's nonsense. Everyone in this house answers to a whistle. I'll show you. Yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler, Fräulein Maria, the new governess. Yes, sir. That is the executive officer, the housekeeper, Frau Schmidt. Please be sure that her room is ready. Yes, sir. Well, Fräulein, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know how to address you. You will call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return your whistle, Captain. I won't need it, Captain. Now that it's just us, <clears throat> will you please tell me your names again and how old you are? Now you're... I'm Liesel. I'm 16 years old, and I don't need a governess. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14 years old. I'm a boy. 
A boy? Why, you're almost a man. I'm Brigitte. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa, and she's 13 years old. And you're smart. I'm nine, and I think your dress is the ugliest one I've ever seen. <laughs> Brigitte, you mustn't say anything like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? Even if I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt, and I'm 11. Almost. That's a nice age to be 11, almost. I'm Marta. I'm turning seven on Tuesday, and I'd like a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color, too. And you're Gretel? I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. How do I start? You mean you don't know anything about being a governess? Nope. Well, the first thing you have to do is tell Father why I'm so famous. No, you don't. Don't. I like it. What's this? That's my guitar. What did you bring it for? For when we all sing together. We don't sing. Everybody sings. Of course you sing. What songs do you know? We don't know any songs. You don't? No. Well, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing.
do that all together and to know that he's here. Don't you tell your father. Why not? Well, he's pretty Austrian. We're all Austrian. Some people think we ought to be German. They're pretty mad at those who don't think so. They're getting ready to... Well, let's just hope your father doesn't get into any trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. I know. I don't worry about him. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you, Liesl? <laughs> What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage for fate to turn the light on. Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. Baby, it's time to think. Better be where we can be careful. Maybe you're on the brink. You are 16, going on 17. Fellows will fall in line. Eager young lads and ways and cats will offer you food and wine. Totally unprepared. Timid and shy and scared are you of things beyond your ken? You need someone older and wiser telling you what to do. I am seventeen. 
God bless the captain, God bless Liesel, Friedrich, Luisa, Brigitte, Marta, and little Gretel. Oh yes, I forgot the other boy, what's his name? Well, God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother and Sister Margaretta and everyone in Nunnberg Abbey. And now, dear God, about Lisa. Help her to know that I'm her friend. And help her to tell me what she's been up to. Are you going to tell on me? Help me to be understanding so that I may guide her footsteps. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was out taking a walk, and somebody locked the doors earlier than usual, and I didn't want to wake everybody up, so when I saw your window open, you're not going to tell Father, are you? Did you climb that trellis to get up here? That's how we always got into this room, to play tricks on the governess. Well, Lisa can climb it with a toad in her hand. Lisa, were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we washed that dress out tonight, no one would notice it tomorrow. Then all this would be between you and me. You could put this on. Take your dress in there and put it to soak in the bathtub. Then come back out here and we'll have a talk. I told you today I didn't need a governess. Well, maybe I do. Oh, it's you, Grinnell. Are you afraid? You're not scared of the thunderstorm, are you? You just stay right here with me. Where are the others? Thank you. 
while we're having coffee out here. Yes, sir. And Detweiler is still on the telephone. How sure you? Oh, thank you. No sign of the children, Franz. Not yet. Okay, oh, those mountains are magnificent. Yes, they're not like other mountains. They're friendly. Look, that green stretch of woods over there? When the wind passes through it, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village. It's not a village, it's a town. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him. And when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like those mountains, except you keep moving. How can you be away from this place as much as you are? Maybe I've been searching for a reason to come back here to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Max can't still be on the telephone. I know he's desperate about getting singers for the Kultzburg Festival, but... You like it here. Well, we have to spend some time in Vienna if I find it's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation now. It is, and I'm the president. You? President of a corporation? After all, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I can't see you sitting behind a desk. But of course, I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Yeah, that one would like his coffee. While he's on the telephone, he just said. I am sorry I'm late. Any luck? Well, how would you like this for the Kaltzberg Festival? It's the greatest choir in all of Austria. The finest mixed quartet in all of Europe. And the best soprano in the world. <laughs> Max, that's something I'd love to hear. So would I. All I have now is a basso who isn't even profundo. Max, you always come up with a good festival <laughs> concert. <laughs> and why? Because my motto has always been, never set out looking for the people you end up getting. <laughs> That's why I've been telephoning Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. And Georg's telephone. <laughs> well, how else could I afford it? <laughs> why am I here? I hoped it was because you liked me. I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. And you have an excellent wine cellar. Max. I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. Georg, speaking as a government official, is there a cathedral in the area? Uh, yes, uh, our abbey, Nuremberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. <laughs> oh, good. Over the next few days, I'll have to visit all of the small towns in the area to listen to the, to listen to the choirs, the zandelbums, the quartets. You'll be here for meals, won't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was in a town about this size, Watsman, where I first discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous, and toured all over the world. Oh, yes, whatever became of them? Well, by the time their voices had changed, they had become rich enough to live in America. <laughs> Georg, who lives in that dilapidated castle down there? Uncle Stiltskin? Baron Elberfeld, uh, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, why don't you have a dinner for me while I'm here? Nothing very much, just something lavish. <laughs> I wouldn't know whom to invite. Nowadays, it's hard to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. This isn't a good time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. Whatever could have happened to the children? You aren't worried about them, are you? They should have been here to welcome you. Or couldn't have been an intentional slight because they hadn't met me yet. Forgive me. I'll try to find them. That's mm. Have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry her? Oh, yes. He hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. Uh, and you don't know what it is. No. I do. What? It's very simple. 
It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich. And you are rich. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms, away upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. Their famous moments, fortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who have made it, she very seldom hear of. Not a sign of them anyway. No, it's a shine to share with me. Cleaned up. Get into your uniforms and report back here. At once! Frola, where did you get these abominations? <laughs> Out of a nightmare? No, I have some curtains. 
The curtains that used to hang in my bedroom, there was plenty of wear left in them. Just a moment. <laughs> Am I to understand that the people of the neighborhood have seen my children wearing old curtains? <laughs> yes, they've become very popular, sir. Everyone smiles at them. I don't wonder. They say, there go Captain Von Trapp's children. My children have always been a credit to my name. But Captain, they weren't. They were just unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear from you about my children. Well, you must hear from someone. You're not home long enough to know them. I said I don't want to hear I from I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. <laughs> Liesel isn't a child anymore, and if you keep treating her as one, Captain, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich is afraid to be himself. He's shy. He's aloof. Friedrich needs you. He needs your confidence. Don't tell me about my son. Rita could tell you about him. She could tell you a lot more if you got to know her because she notices things and she always tells the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. And Kurt is sensitive. He's easily hurt and you ignore him. You brush him aside the way you do all of them. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Louisa just wants to have a good time. You've got to let her have a good time. And Marta, I don't know about it yet, but someone's <coughs> got to find out about her. And little Gretel just wants to be loved. Oh, please, Captain, love Gretel. Love all of them. They need you. Stop it! Stop. You will pack your things and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said those things. Not in the way that I said After you've gone, there'll be... What's that? Sing it. Who's singing? Your children. My children are singing? I wanted them to sing for Frau Schrader, but they never heard her.
Guess I'm not very used to dancing. Well, hello there. Good evening, Fresh Raider. <clears throat> I hope you're feeling better, Fresh Raider. Yes, thank you, Kurt. Hello, Uncle Max. We're having a party. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, tell your father it's sure to be a success. I am here. <laughs> Max. Oh, Elsa. Without a doubt, the most beautiful corporation president <laughs> in the entire world. Thank you, Max. <laughs> of course. Max, you made it. And as usual, just in time for dinner. Oh, Gail, did you think that you were going to have a gala without me? Oh, dear. Now we have an odd man. Oh, maybe a little odd, but charming. <laughs> Liesl, run and tell Frau Schmidt to set two more places. I want to see Fräulein Maria. Two places? Oh, we're short a woman. Oh, Liesl? Oh, no, she's much too young. I'll ask Maria. You can't be serious. But of course. She's a nursemaid. I don't think of her that way. Well, I don't have a problem with it. You, you, you can't expect your friends and your guests to dine with Maria. Then why not? <coughs> Elsa, tell them why not. Max, can you change in a hurry? Yes, Max. We can use you tonight. Can I They're talking about you up there. Come on, Gator. I've been dodging these people for over an hour. Brigitte, you seen your father? Good evening, Fräulein Maria. Heard that, Weller. It's nice to see you again. Yes, you're going to. <laughs> I knew it all along. Frau Schneider didn't have a headache. She just wanted to get out of the party. She was faking. Brigitte, you shouldn't say things that you don't know are true. But I do know. I've heard her say to father that she's been dodging these people. That doesn't mean she didn't have a headache. It's very important that you children like Frau Schrader. I like her all right. Why is it important? Well, I think she's going to be your new mother. <laughs> Why? Father's never going to marry her. <laughs> he couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because he's in love with you. <gasps> Birgitta, that is just the sort of thing. You must know that. Well, no, Birgitta, no. I remember the other night when we were all sitting on the floor singing the Edelweiss song he taught us? After we finished, you laughed at him for forgetting the words. He didn't forget the words. He just stopped singing to look at you. And, and when he speaks to you, the way his voice sounds, and the way you look at him just now when you were dancing, you were in love with him? No, Rikita, no! Now, Gregory, one more dance and then it's up to bed. Oh, from Anne Marie. You're not having dinner with the children tonight. You're having dinner with us down here. Oh yes, it's all arranged. You'll have to hurry, you'll have to change. Oh, and Maria, wear the dress you wore the other night when we were all singing. It was lovely, soft and white. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa, not here. Please, Gail, for me. That was so sweet the way they did it for me. No, no, not in front of strangers. Please, Gail, for me. Rest on change, girl. Max, you're just in time, children. Now. <laughs> See? 
They were extraordinary. Fraulein Marie taught them to do it. <laughs> to think, I've been searching all over Austria for a group like this for the festival, and I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. Seven children in one family. Max, Gayhold didn't even want them to sing in front of the guests tonight. I had to persuade him. So then he had influence. You must talk to him. Max. Elsa, this is important for Austria. And it wouldn't do me any harm. <laughs> time for you. It was for her mother. Has it taught you anything? I've learned that I never want to leave these walls again. Why did they send you back to us? They didn't send me back. I left. I left without telling them I was going, without saying goodbye. Sit down, Maria. Maria, what happened? Why have you done this? I was frightened. Frightened? I was confused. I felt... I never felt that way before. I knew I couldn't stay, that here I'd be safe and I'd be away from it all. Our Abby is not to be used as an escape, Maria. What is it you can't face? I can't face him again. Thank you, Sister Margareta. Sister Bertha. <laughs> Maria, are you in love with Captain Fontra? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Brigitte said that I was, and that her father was in love with me. And then there we were, and we were looking at each other, and I could hardly breathe. I knew that I couldn't stay. But do you like him, Maria? Oh, yes. Did you let him see how you felt? If I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was sent there on God's errand to have asked whether Captain's love would have been wrong. I don't know, Mother. But I do know this. 
I'm ready at this very moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Maria, the love of a man and a woman is holy too. Do you remember the first day we talked together? You told me you remembered your father and mother before they died. Do you remember, were they happy? Oh, yes, they were very happy. Maria, you were born of their happiness, of their love. And my child, you have a great capacity to love. What you must find out is, how does God want you to spend your love? I have pledged my life to God. I have pledged my life to God's service. My daughter, if you love this man, it doesn't mean that you love God any less. You must find out. You must go back. Oh, no, Mother, please don't make me do that. Let me stay here. This abbey is not meant to be used as an escape. You must face your problems. You must find the life you were meant to live. How do I find it? Look for it. Of a big concert hall. What concert hall is that? Uh, 
I don't know, uh, it's a Carlsberg concert hall. Uh, but a concert hall filled with people. Now, let's try again. Sing loud. I have a sore finger. Oh. Now you can sing loud for Uncle Max. You all sang so beautifully the night of the of the of the party with such spirit. Let's try once more. They wanted to sing for me, <laughs> little darlings. Except that they don't sing as well as they used to. We do not need Fräulein Maria. You can sing just as well with me. Uh, okay, Olga. I have experience with choirs, with sanglebuns, <laughs> with nice. us. Please. Now, what do you want to sing? Do a dee, a female dee, ray, a drop of golden time. Fräulein Maria, all We are not to mention Fräulein Maria. On that side, we like a brisk walk. Yes, uh, that's exactly what I need. Is anyone using the car? <laughs> now, what are we going to sing? <laughs> to leave us without even saying goodbye. Is she ever coming back? No, darling, I don't think she is. But she's the best governess we've ever had. You're not going to have a governess anymore. Oh, good. I don't think that's so good. You're going to have a new mother. A new mother? Frau Schrader? Yes. It was all settled last night. I'm very happy. Well, it's time for your afternoon walk. When Maria wanted to feel better, she used to sing this song, remember? Yes. All right. Let's try it. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper candles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied on the strings. Sure? Oh yes, he just told us. He 
taking those phone calls from Berlin. Because if they don't keep their promise, I want to have friends among them. Naturally. Oh, so you agree. Georg, this is how I look at it. There once was a man who was dying, and they were reading him his last rites. They said, do you renounce the devil and all of his works? And he says, at this moment, I prefer not to make any enemies. Um. Georg, if they, if they should invade us, would you defy them? Yes. <laughs> Do you know what would happen to you? To your property? To your children? To those close to you? To Elsa? To me? Well, what will you do if they invade? What anyone any sense would do. Just sit tight <laughs> and wait for it all to blow over. And you think it will? Well, one thing I know for sure. Nothing you can do can make any difference. Don't look so serious, darling. Take the world off your shoulders. Relax. You'd be attractive to me, I might be a mist. Today you need to learn to be a realist. You may be bent on doing deeds of daring do. But I'm against a shark, what can a heron do? I will not bow my head to the men I despise. You don't have to bow your head, just stoop a little. Oh, no. 
You did say the wrong thing, but you said it at the right time. The children told me you were going to marry for a traitor. We found we just couldn't go the same way. That door is shut. Sister Margaret always says I'm in God shuts a door. I know. He opens a window. Maria, why did you run away to the Abbey? What made you come back? The mother abbess. She said, but you have to look for your life. Often when you find it, you don't recognize it. No. Not at first. Until one day, one night, all of a sudden it stands before you. Yes. I look at you now and I realize this is not something that has just happened. This is something I have known deep inside for many weeks. You knew it too. What was it that told you? Brigitte, she said that night when we were dancing. She was quite right. That wasn't just an ordinary dance, was it? I haven't danced since I was a very little girl. It's quite different once you're grown up, isn't it? It is different. It is different. Maria, your whole life will be different now. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. Give you anything you wish. I don't want to go anywhere.
together somehow. Who? The mother abbess and Edita. <laughs> An ordinary couple is all we'll ever be. For all I want of living is to keep you close to me, to laugh and weep together as time goes on its flight, to kiss you every morning and to.
Hallsford Festival 1938. And here's your, here are all your names, Liesl, Friedrich, Louisa, Kurt, Brigitte, Marta, and Gretel. Why am I last? We're the youngest. Now, Liesl, I'm depending on you. Day after tomorrow, I need you to make sure that all of the children Aunt are ready. Aunt Lila, can you help me, please? The Galilite is here. He wants to know why we aren't flying the new flag. Hey! I tried to explain. Be quiet. It's Captain Von Trapp returning. Who knows? <laughs> when a man is on his honeymoon. Isn't that time for joking? I'm supposed to happen four days ago. This is the only house in the district that is not flying the flag of the Third Reich. You mean the flag with a black spider on it? Forget that. <laughs> you permit such remarks in this house? Who are you? I, sir, am. Maximilian Detweiler, first secretary of the of the Ministry of Education and Culture. That was in the old regime. In, in the old regime, I was third secretary. <laughs> now I'm first secretary. Good. Then you ordered them to fly the flag. Captain Von Trapp wouldn't. I mean, we can only take our orders from Captain Von Trapp. You will take orders from us. And so will the captain. Hi! Hi. Why are you so cross? Everybody's cross these days. Is father going to be in trouble? He doesn't have to be. The thing to do today is to get along with everybody. Uh, now, Liesl, make sure that all the children are on the bus at 11 o'clock. Uh, are you sure this will be all right with father? Oh, yes. <laughs> He will be pleased and proud. Liesl, do you think so? You don't trust me, Pepita? No! Well, anyway, make sure the children are ready at 11 o'clock. Frau and Liesl, see what I have here. That's father's luggage. Yes, they're, they're back. back. They're back. They're back. Father, they'll have such a lot to tell us. Let's not rush to tell that. Max! <laughs> <laughs> we didn't expect you back until next week. Max, it's good you're here. There's much I want to know. Children, we miss you so very much. What did you miss most? We missed all that noise you make in the morning. The noise you make telling each other to be quiet. <laughs> we missed climbing upstairs to say goodnight to you. We missed hearing you sing. Oh, you came back just in time to hear Look, brother, we're singing in the Cosmere Festival Friday night. <laughs> Let me see that. Max, are you responsible for this? <laughs> okay, you're not. I, I was just waiting to talk to you about it. You can't talk your way out of this one, Max. President! President! I had to make a last-minute decision. We were lucky to have them entered into the festival at all. <laughs> they will be the talk of the festival. Seven children in one family. Not my family. They, they sang for the judges, and they were enchanted. Really, Max? What did they say? You have never heard such praise. <laughs> the Von Trapp family does not sing in public. What if they make people happy? And for the festival, people come from all over the world. It is out of the question. Georg, this is for Austria. There is no Austria. The Anschluss happened peacefully. Let's at least be grateful for that. Grateful? To these swine? Maria, <laughs> he has to at least pretend to work with these people. I, I admire the way he thinks, uh, but he has to compromise. You, you must talk to him. No, Max, no. Maria, you must. Max, I can't ask Georg to be any less than what he is. Well, then I'll talk to him, because if, if the children don't perform in this festival, well, it would be a reflection of Austria. And it wouldn't do me any good. <laughs> Maria, I've always known you loved us children. Now I know you love father. I do, Lisa. I love him very much. How can you be sure? I don't think first of myself anymore. I think first of him. I know now how to spend my life. Thank you.
to know that you and the children are safe. But it would also mean... Please, Maria, help me. Garrick, whatever you decide will be my decision.
That's very flattering, sir, but I've had no time to consider. Uh, your orders are to report to Bremerhaven immediately. Immediately? I'm afraid that would be impossible for you, Georg. Admiral, may I present to you my wife, the Baroness von Trapp, Admiral von Trapp. What I mean to say is, we're all performing at the Kaltzberg Festival Friday night. The Von Trapp family singer is right here in the program. Yes, yes, it's, it's all been arranged by the Ministry of Education and Culture. Friday night. This is Wednesday. Just a matter of two days. You could report to Bremerhaven on Monday. Admiral. Is there a telephone I could use? Oh, yes, right this way. If I could get any of them, perhaps adding the weight of my voice. The gifts here. Only the names of the children. It says the Von Trapp family singers. I am the head of the Von Trapp family. It's hard to believe you. Captain Von Trapp, singing in front of a concert. Now, Cella, you may believe what you choose. It doesn't say here what you're going to sing at the concert, Captain. What are you going to sing? Uh, it is your privilege to come to the concert and hear it. Oh, I want to hear you sing now. Sing what you're going to sing at the concert. Sing! Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Lisa, will you give us a do? Do, a deer, a female deer, ray, a trouble for the sun.
ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, in just a moment, uh, I have an announcement that concerns you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the conclusion of our festival concert. <laughs> Except, of course, we don't yet know what that conclusion is going to be. The judges are putting their heads together to make their final decision. And while we wait, uh, I think there should be an encore. It seems that this may be the last opportunity that the Von Trapp families will have to sing together for a long, long time. I've been informed that Captain Von Trapp leaves immediately after the concert to take his post in the naval forces of the Third Reich. A guard of honor has arrived to escort Captain Von Trapp from this hall to the base at Bremerhaven. Ladies and gentlemen, the family von Trapp again.
They have only five more rooms to search. It should be long now. How many of them are there? I counted only eight stormtroopers in their office. Sister Margarita, we didn't know we put the Abbey in danger. It's outrageous. The church has always been sanctuary. Not with these people. This is the third time they've searched the Abbey. That's why we put you out here in the garden. They always search inside, never outside. Isn't this God's house? Yes, darling. Shh. We must all be very, very quiet. We'll let you know when they've gone. When they've gone, can we go home? No, darling. We have a very long drive ahead of us. Come, let me see. Lieutenant! There's no one out here, sir. All right, come along. Thank God. They've gone. Reverend Mother, we're sorry we brought this on you. Reverend Mother, we can never thank you. As soon as it's safe, we'll start. We hid our car deep in the woods. The car will do you no good. They've left a guard on the road. It's outside the gate. I've been listening to the wireless. All the roads are blocked. The borders are closed. I've always thought of these mountains as my friends. Standing there, watching over us. Now it seems as if they've become my enemies. Never your enemies. Haven't you read? For I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. Georg, I know that mountain as well as I know this garden. And once we're over it, we're in Switzerland. But the children. We can help them. We don't need help. <laughs> For you'll have help. For ye shall go forth with joy, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst forth before you to sing.
Thank you, Penny. Bye. Oh, bye. 